a high fantasy type pirate's game. I'm playing an ex-fisherman turned big damn hero in a world which could, at best, be described as cynical. And at worst, be described as GM hates idealists and heroes, so my character ended up as a long-suffering, no-good-deed-goes-unpunished type. If someone asked me for help with her sister who was getting mugged, it was a hook to mug me. The rest of the party took use of my good nature and used me as a meat shield. All the time. My character didn't care. Well, didn't mind. And he wasn't that smart either. He was in fact rather stupid, but nice and kind and good. Eventually, we hit the big bad evil guy whose plan is to become God, etc, etc. Using an ancient crystal that was the last tear of a dead god. The dead god. Please to let this be a dark crystal, that <laughs> Only problem is, it corrupts whoever it touches. It kind of sounds like the dark crystal. It does sound dark crystal to me, but I love the dark crystals yeah. and kill with this. Now, this game has two major individual features. Corruption points, representing how open your soul is to twisting by others and magic. And a sort of limit break trace thing which activated when you were under serious emotional stress, or had a chance to, causing you to change form and become a living avatar of your soul slash mind. Due to a series of bad rolls, my character had never used his trance mode. The big bad evil guy stands before us, crystal in hand, gloating about how evil wins and he will destroy our village first, then smacks down the entire group in one hit, while ascending to his godly form, his human form had a corruption rating of about 750, where something like rape, long, drawn-out torture, or genocide had a rating of about 50. This multiplies by 100. Due to the influence of the crystal, and how twisted and insane his god form is based off this number, think Eldridge Abomination so horrific that Haster would look at it and go, fuck me, what's that? All the PCs are down. The world is doomed. We were meant to get there and stop him before he managed this as a grip. I have a few skills and feats that have automatic effects, one of which is called Risen Determination. Roll a d100 each time a PC is downed, 5% chance of you getting back up if you're down, or healing to your full if you're up. Last stand, Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, last stand, Call of Duty to me. I asked to be allowed to roll. GM thinks, sure, why not, and lets me roll. I roll four times. Two, three, ninety-eight, and one. Ooh, let's see what that did. I'll be interested. Back up, full health. I then ask the GM if I can roll for trance, as this creature stands against everything I believe in, and I need to kill it to save everything I love. Sure, why not? Critical. Trance. Cool. Still no chance of beating it, as this thing is a literal walking god, and I just happen to be an angry fisherman. <laughs> I describe my transform, halfway between liquid and man, Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean style crossover between the pure heart of the ocean and a man who tames it, wearing a flowing coat of seaweed, hair made of the wildest storm rack or rack, racked, racked water. <laughs> racked. I'm racked water, I don't know what that means at all, but sure, why not? With eyes like a storm to come and glowing lightest blue, the colour of purity. I rally to face the monster before me, and it's on me in moments, wanting us all gone for good, so it can focus on destroying all life. I take the blow, taking me down to about a quarter health in one, as it disintegrates half my body, which reforms quickly. The other PCs watch my futile attempts to fell this... this monster, as I roar defiance against the darkness of the world I live in, tired of good people getting hurt because no one cares. My last act, at which point I return the favour, with my own unique trance ability, the one I'd been itching to use throughout the campaign. The first and most simple of my trance abilities, I place my rod down, charge, and in an apparently final desperate act, grab the beast by the horns and with a roar that crosses from human noise into a thunder of a coming storm. Thum. <laughs> Thum. A blinding white flash as my flesh rips and tears, becoming an equally eldritch abomination, a huge serpent made from flesh, the oceans and the weather the size of small worlds, and with the bellowing roars of a terrible maelstrom to come, as the living god screams in terror at the sight of me and what I'm becoming, as I tear him limb from limb. 
the Serpent Transformation ability. Gain from 1d4 plus 1 rounds. A combat multiplier equal to the highest corruption creatures. Corruption times 1.5. A times 1. <laughs> one. Look, we, don't know the si- yeah. we don't know the system, okay guys? I'm sorry. Combat multiplier on my par. <laughs> God never, God never stood a chance. <laughs> he never, he yeah. never stood a chance. Yeah. <laughs> I then landed again, as the storm I had become abated, the creature gone, and the crystal landed in my hand. I looked at it and nodded, and then held it to my heart for a moment, and then became a god. GM said, "Right, looks like we have a new big bad evil guy." Nope, I'm fine. No. You just took the crystal. Your corruption is through the roof. I'm not letting you play that. You've been driven insane. Nope. Zero times anything. It's still zero. What? Zero corruption. The world became better than it was, slowly. And over the next few years, less grimdark. Less uncaring. It became a better place. The Maelstrom Serpent willed it. And it was so. And his will was so strong that could change the world. Even before the crystal gave him the power to actually change the world with his will. Some say you can meet him on lonely nights. Fishing out under the moon in the form of a young fisherman with eyes the colour of a coming storm. We're doing a new game in the same world. A hundred years on. Starting next week. Where the iron will of a hero has changed the world for the better. And the maelstrom serpent is now a living god. Still around. We're playing a group of fishermen. That was pretty good. I quite I like, really that. like that. No, normally, like, you know, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy, I do love a bit of grim dark from time to time. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. But it's not often, it's normally the DMs that are like, no, we're going to play good, we're going to not be evil, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. Let's be honest, most people, like most players, tend to end up some level of chaotic. Yeah. You know, but I thought that was a really nice change. This was a, no, this was pretty cool. I like yeah, that, I like that. I, like that. I, thought, I think um, he played it very well. And I do love the idea of them all playing fishermen in the next. Uh, yeah. Maybe would fishermen maybe be like a clerk class, maybe? Possibly? Would it have some water like that? Of the ocean? Yeah, maybe. I, could, I don't know. Let us know what you think down below. But look, we've got another story for you. And um, be ready for the feels, okay? Oh, no. <laughs> hey, guys. Sorry to interrupt the video, but it's time for some self-promo. So over the past few months, more and more of our videos have been getting demonetized than usual. A few people have asked about setting up a Patreon and it's not really our thing. We would much rather you check out some of our other sponsors or buy some of our models. But some people have still been asking for a Patreon so why not? So the Patreon is nothing special and we're not offering anything but our general channel support. If you guys have any ideas you would like to see in rewards definitely let us know down below. It really does help us make more videos our YouTube overlords would disapprove of. Also for you guys that dislike Patreon, because we know a lot of people can be iffy on them, we have a Kofi for one-off donations. We also just want to say a big thank you to anyone who does support the channel. If it's checking out the sponsors or buying the models, or even if you just sub to us and keep coming back for our videos. We really, really thank you. Let's get back to the video. I feel like whenever you share these special stories, they get a little less special each time you tell them. But just for you guys, since it seems appropriate to the thread, I'll tell you my tale. Friend of mine is DM. Says I always play dwarves. Try something else for once. I flip through the races. I don't play games very often, so I don't really know as much about the races as I should. Can't decide on something, but don't want to be a dick and just say, I'm a dwarf, deal with it, figgit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that sometimes, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, if, I, if I don't know what to play as, I'm just going to go with a dwarf. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pick a Warforge because at least then I'll have some decent stats to start with. Realise I have no goddamn idea what I'm doing. Go wizard because fuck it. Why not try something entirely new to humanity, not just me? Friend looks at my sheet and rereads the race class lines about six times before looking up at me with a mix of doubt, confusion and a mild lust before deciding he wants to see where I'm going with this shit. Friend has a good point he always makes. That when you make a character, you have to decide on motivation and tell the group. And he's that special breed that gives you a little bonus now and then for following that motivation. Anon, why are you a Warforged wizard? Decided that as a baby Warforged, I watched Mummy Warforged and Daddy Warforged fighting all the time. 
and didn't like it. They were monsters in my eyes. I wasn't afraid of fighting. I wanted to be a hero. I have a dream. I wanted to be a hero. I want to fly. Wait, what? <laughs> what? Table is unsure and looks to DM for their reassurance. And it's not quick in coming. Tell DM I will fuck about in the books. Ebron, etc. As long as it takes until I prove it's doable. And even if it's not, what's wrong with a dream that will never happen? A tragic character is just as thought-provoking as Hithrar McBeef Smash. <laughs> what? What 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 green text is that? That's a, that's another green text story. Is it? Yeah, I think it is another green text story. He's referring to. DM decides I have at least put some thought into my character and agrees. We start off in some fucksville where they buy, sell, and trade in pig shit and incest. Nice. <laughs> nice. Immediately, I start to develop a plan for my character. While the party is helping rid the town of some midnight thief, which may or may not just be a higher level rogue, I speak up when we're sitting at a table with the town's leader. Why would he steal from poor people? If everyone's as poor as it seems around here, I think the only person worth robbing, and the only person who would give a shit around here, is you. Seeing as this is the first meaningful thing my character has said in ours, the table is once again stunned, and my character is swiftly gaining a reputation for being quiet. But when he speaks, you listen. This spirals out of control as the town leader gets increasingly butthurt at my innocent accusations. All the while, the DM is starting to like my suggestion. We're asked to roll, and it seems like I might be right. At the very least, I've got the guy flustered. He and I both have a more fluid method of story generation. We don't show up with pre-prepared books. Instead, a list of ideas, rough directions we want the story to go, stuff we can change on the fly. I get kicked out of super special meeting, to no surprise. But once the party leaves, it turns out the guy is just as corrupt as it seems. And we decided to go find the mass thief. But we plan to help them if they can convince us their cause is just as I assumed. Long story short, that leads to us becoming bandits with the plucky thief by our side. We hide from the authorities whenever we can. Fight them if we can't. Essentially, we have fun and steal from the rich, give to the poor. Eventually, a darker thread emerges. And turns out, some necromancer wants to be a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> My character... <laughs> I love how you both laughed at the same tone there. <laughs> My character is a joyful, innocent robot. He will occasionally say something brutally naive, which leads to antics. When sneaking into Necromancer's lair and trying to bluff our way past the guards, it's not going well and he's reaching for something. If we weren't the right people, would we really be trying to walk in the front door? He thinks for a moment and lets us in. Party can't believe our luck. While we're sitting in on the super secret church meeting, turns out the necromancer soon to be Lich has a plan. Ancient artifact, which is basically a D&D version of an ancient cruise missile. They're going to go find it and launch it at a big city of nice people stam. <laughs> Let's see. Kill everyone, raise the dead, have a party. We being the good fight for rights rebels without a cause, goody two shoes bandits we are, decide we are the only ones capable of stopping them in time. By the time we got to the city, they'd be up on the cliff firing the damn thing. Necro intends to ascend to a lich status by using the power of the artifact, yada yada, you know the drill. At this point, my robot has become the lovable idiot, while everyone else has lost a character. Somehow my wizard survived. Final battle in shoes. We have tagged along to the location, but the necromancer knew we were spies the whole time. He just wanted us to witness the destruction before he killed us and made us into Skellingtons. <laughs> Skellingtons. Skellingtons. <laughs> I don't know if that's on purpose I or don't not. Know. At this point, I am a moderately powerful wizard. Blast all my shitty spells and start using what little I have left prepared. Beefy warrior is dying. Sorceress is dead. Other warrior is beating things with a shield. All of a sudden, we realize we were on a timer and we've run out of time. Necromancer cackles as he creates his phylactery and ascends the Lich status. Beefy Warrior 2 charges, but Lich just levitates. He launches the artifact. All of the Lich's cronies just stand and watch in awe. Everyone is quiet. Warrior is on his knees in front of me. I place a hand on his shoulders and speak to him softly. You stay. I go. No following. Last time I levelled up, 
I got access to the spell I wanted and told no one. Cast fly. DM doesn't make me roll. Take off into the sky with the assistance of some minor artifacts flying directly after the missile. Overtake it and turn around. Halfway between here and the city which is just in the distance. Fly towards the artifact. Communicate my final thoughts to the warrior with my last spell. DM doesn't make me roll. He says it wouldn't be right to make me roll. My last words. Superman. <laughs> oh, I could <can. laughs> <laughs> Done very well, I must say. I told you, I told you the fails were coming. What I like about both these stories is it kind of explains how you can make like lawful good characters and they're not lawful stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is like, you know, I, I get this all the time. People are like, oh, the only way to play like play a fun character is you need to be like chaotic neutral, do whatever you want. You don't need a car. Whereas I think like, you know, if you really put in the time and effort yeah. to make a genuinely good lawful good character, like this is a good example to run by yeah. you know you don't have to act like a dick out all the time yeah. but it's some of them acts that you do in the end that really really define the character moments Yeah. I don't know if this reminds me more of the Iron Giant or do you remember Iron Man at the start of or the end of Avengers Assemble do you remember when he goes through the Vortex thing and he puts on yeah the remember the, yeah. the Nichols yeah it's kind of like that but look I really enjoyed these stories and they've been ones that have been sitting on my to do list forever and like you know I thought why not just put them both together? Yeah. Uh, so, like, hopefully you got the feels. Um, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> but, like, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, all that other good shit. It really helps us out a lot. Check out the advert, and we'll see you next time. Bye.